Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. This is Isaiah, Yeshayahu 16b, as we continue the study of the Masa, the burden of Moab. Yeshayahu began telling us of the burden of Moab by describing the terrible suffering and destruction that awaited the people of Moab. Yeshayahu cried over their suffering, and he therefore desperately attempted to deliver the message that could have saved the people of Moab. Once again, it was the message of justice, the message of righteous, righteousness. And in the special case of Moab, it was that they should faithfully fulfill their special mission of giving shelter to the refugees that come to them for protection, given their unique location in the desert, and to help provide these refugees with relief from oppression. Fulfill these ideals, told Isaiah told them, and bow before God and Zion, and the people of Moab, you can be saved. But alas, Yeshayahu lamented in the last verse we studied in the last podcast, it is not to be. Why? Because Shamanu Geon Moab, we have heard that they are too haughty, too arrogant. Gay Maod Gabato, their arrogance is so, so, so strong, so, so, so haughty. So therefore, Yeshayahu continues. And what we'll study today together in verses 7 through 14 of chapter 16. Lachain, therefore, yeye lil moav, le moav kulo yeye lil. Let moav howl, let them scream and cry. Since they are so, uh, so haughty, let them cry and scream. La ashishe kir. Let them cry for their cakes and sweets. This is one possible meaning of the word ashishe, or it could mean their great leaders. Let them cry for their great leaders that they lost. Now you've broken people of Moab that are refugees yourselves. Now you will cry as refugees. Kishad mot cheshbon umlal gefen sivma. Because the vineyards of Cheshbon and the vines of Sivma are all dried up. The great conquering nations, those nations from whom so many of those refugees had been running from when they sought refuge amongst you, the people of Moab. Those very same great uh, countries and conquering nations have now come and 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 tore away those those um, tendrils, those branches of the vines. Adyazer nagau taumidbar. The people of Moab themselves. Now you are the refugees. All the way to Yazer they have reached. Taumidbar, you are now wandering in the desert yourself. Shaluchosah nitshu avriam. You have been thrown away from your homeland all the way, all the way out to the distant, distant places across the sea. Therefore, says Yeshayahu, just as I cried before, I cry now doubly strong. Doubly strong. Over Yazer, Gefen Sivma, over the place of Yazer, which is now destroyed, and the vines of Sivma. I will drench you with I will drench you with tears with my tears. Cheshbon ve'LLA, the cities of the Moabite great cities of Cheshbon and LLA. Isaiah cries doubly. Number one, over the terrible suffering of the people of Moab, but worse because they had the chance to be better and avoid the destruction, but their arrogance got in the way. Ki al ketzech bi al ketzirech heidod nafal. Because there is no longer any more shouts of joy over your harvests of figs and grains. And the, the happiness and celebration are taken away now from the great farmlands of Moab. And no longer are there songs in the vineyards. No longer is there shaking of the ground from the dancing in the vineyards. The pressers are no longer pressing wine in the wine presses. 
hey dod hishpati i god have quieted the revelers al kain once again says aishayahu isaiah tells us may i limo of kakinoria hamu my heart cries in agony like the sad song of a harp the kirbi le kirhares my insides my deepest soul is crying for the loss of the place kirhares the hayaki nir aki nil amo of alabama and what happens why i'm crying so much over this destruction you had the chance moab you could have been you could have done well you could have done right but instead you didn't and what did you do when you saw that it wasn't helping when you went to the high places to pray to to those to, to your idols instead of learning your ways you got even worse you went to his the idols special temples you went to his the idols special temples to pray but he couldn't help you instead of learning your lesson when you first went to the high places to pray to the gods and it didn't work you should have learned your lesson and humbled yourself before god and learned that prayers in front of the false gods is not what helps but rather mending your ways becoming better people and humbling yourself before the one true god would be the only way to help save yourselves but you didn't you so to speak double down on your evil ways zahadavar asher diber adonai el moav meaz this is the word that god spoke regarding moav in the old days long ago in this verse ishayahu is saying that this prophecy spoken regarding moav is something that was spoken long ago many scholars assume that this means that these very words of this prophecy were spoken by another prophet long ago and ishayahu is quoting it here for the writer of this book depending on which scholar you're reading is quoting it here however i believe this is simply ishayahu stating that this lesson was taught to moab a long long time ago perhaps this refers to the events recorded in the book of numbers in bamidbar when the jews were wandering in the desert moab should then have learned and given help and shelter to the jewish refugees wandering through the desert instead they shunned them and in fact tried to harm them This lesson should have been learned by the Moabites then long long ago but now Ishayahu says I'm still trying to teach you this lesson today but soon says Ishayahu bi ata di bara dunay lemar and now God says saying bishlosh anim kishne sakhir in very soon in within three years like the three years of a of a laborer the niklak vod moav all that honor that moav had will shrink will fade away the khol ha mon harav with all of its huge multitude of people who shar maat mizar lo kabir only a little tiny droplet will be left of no consequence no significant amount says ishayahu very soon it will be too late to turn around You've had enough chances to learn your lesson. Unfortunately, sadly, tragically, Moab did not learn their lesson and suffered the fate that Ishayahu was prophesizing here. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Looking forward to studying the next burden, the next masa, which we will study together in chapter 17.